Okay, good uh, afternoon and welcome to Helsinki. Uh, my name is Matti Vainio. I'm heading the unit called Risk Management Implementation. Uh, one of the tasks of, of this unit is, my unit is to, to handle the applications for authorization when they're coming to, to ECHA. Um, so um, uh, what we're aiming to do that is, is to, to uh, have today and tomorrow a good thorough go through of the old applications for authorization and, and we plan the program for you accordingly. So very much welcome. I'll give you some opening remarks and then I actually have a, also a presentation. Um, first, important information, emergency exits. So if, they're here, if you hear some, some sort of a sound which sounds like a fire alarm, go there, okay? And follow then everybody uh, who's, who's, who's taking you out. Uh, this seminar is web-streamed. So we have 60, uh, 60 uh, uh, people who have said that they might, might come in. Right now we have about 20, so welcome also the ones who are web-streamed. Um, we will publish the presentations on our websites and also the recordings, so in a sense what we're discussing here will be there as well for the benefit of, of anybody who might not be here today. Uh, and we have a free Wi-Fi uh, over here, but we would hope that you don't use very much that during the sessions because I think hopefully you're coming here to discuss and, and learn rather than uh, check your emails and so on. But it's over there the, and the, uh, the uh, Wi-Fi as well. Uh, you have a badge, I hope all of you, looking like this. And then we have uh, a double security over here. So you have another badge, which is called Visit Visitors. That Visitors badge you need to leave uh, on the, on the uh, reception when you leave from here tonight. And then you need to get it back again for tomorrow. Um, so, but the other badge you can keep, of course. And keep, please keep them visible. If you smoke... Um, then there's one special place for that very badly hidden besides the restaurant, the first floor terrace. I'll give you the special pass for that. You'll authorize to do that only in that case. My jokes aside, the place is, is pretty, pretty free and the sun is shining, so smoke happily over there. Uh, dinner cruise, uh, we have um, uh, thought it would be nice to have a dinner cruise uh, and, and we will have one. Uh, we have about 10 people who still have not paid for the dinner cruise. So the ones who haven't paid, can you use the next coffee break and pay it? Otherwise, <clears throat> I have to pay it from my own pocket. And I would not like to do that, so if that's possible. Uh, there are a couple of people who have said that they, they unfortunately, either they're not coming at all uh, or, or they cannot make it. So there are actually one or two extra places to, tonight uh, if you want to join us. So even if you have not... Um, uh, an, um, put your hat, down, uh, hat out for that, you can still join us uh, tonight. It's 50 euros, including, of course, the meal, uh, so please do that. The, uh, if anybody brought white wine, please, can you raise your hands? White, white wine. Red wine doesn't have to be chilled, chilled down, but white wine. If you have not given your bottle of white wine to somebody, please give it to Sanna. We'll put it to the fridge. Because white wine is much nicer to drink uh, colder than warm. So, so if you haven't done it, so please give it to her. So in a couple of hours it will cool down. Okay, and then we have, we have the feed, uh, feed feedback form, which you should have in front of you. Uh, to, so I think it would be very good to fill it in before uh, tonight, so for, for this day's program. I don't know how much wine we drink on the boat, but in any case, good to could remember tonight <laughs> before you, you leave to, to, to do the, the, uh, the information feedback form. So we, we get the feedback and we can develop this further. Okay, those are the uh, what are called the bare essentials. Uh, I'd like to also, before we go to the, a bit more to the program, uh, introduce you uh, Hugo Watershot. Uh, and Ervin Anis, who are going to be the co-chairs co over here on many sessions. And then uh, Sanna Henriksson, who's on my left here, and Philip Hennig over there, who are very much putting the program together with many of the other staff as well. So, so um, any questions you might have during the coffee breaks and so on, please ask them as well. Now, uh, concerning authorization, uh, the, it's a new process with high expectations. And... Um, it's maybe good to remind ourselves that it is the main goal of, of authorization is actually to substitute hazardous chemicals, however, while ensuring the function of the internal market in the EU. So it's a balancing act at the end of the day. Uh, it's new to all parties. It's new for, for us uh, in ECHA. Uh, it's also new for the Commission. It's new for the committees. 
And it's obviously new for the applicants and the third parties and so on. So we are learning by doing. And today, for instance, is, is one, one of those places where we can learn by doing. Uh, there is a need for, because of that, a lot of communication, pragmatism and sharing experiences. Uh, they all play a key role. And by working that way, we have mostly, not completely, but mostly uh, clarified the uncertainties in the last couple of years. Uh, every year there's a new new couple of things coming up and we'll have to sort those out as well. But many of the things which were uncertain, I think, are now much more clear. Um, the first cases that have gone through show that the application process itself is working quite well, is transparent and predictable. Uh, the public consultations have proved their value. Um, the, uh, there isn't clearly an incentive to substitute, but at the same time it's done in a way that it is um, what we would call fit for purpose. Uh, it has clearly improved risk management measures, and you'll get hearing about that as well. And uh, it's clear that with the cases which have uh, a well uh, good justification, so they will get an authorization. We have some examples of that already. The state of play at the moment, uh, since the beginning, is that we have received 28 applications for authorization so far from 44 applicants. Some of the applications have been joined for nine substances and uh, altogether for 56 uses. The Commission has decided on four applications so far, and RAC and SEAC have issued opinions uh, almost all of these applications now. Uh, there are one or two uses left, but it mainly it's done the bulk already. And uh, it usually has taken about seven months for them to do the whole, uh, um, uh, the draft opinion and the final opinion on the average, whereas it would actually, by, by reach, you could do it in 12 months or, or 14 months. The point here is that the, the machinery works quite well at the moment, the opinion making is, is functioning very well, and Tim Bauner, who's, who's on my right over here, he's going to give a presentation later about how that works in detail. Um, and so far, all opinions have uh, recommended an authorization. So there has not been so, so far uh, what we would call a negative opinion in colloquial terms. Um, there's, it's very important to raise awareness. And uh, we have done that in several different ways. And these are examples of those. We have the guidance and the manuals and the instructions, of course. We have descriptions of how Iraq and Iraq evaluate the applications. We have so-called fee calculators, so you know what you're paying when you're actually entering the systems. We have developed during the, during the process about 70 questions and answers. We have probably participated over 100 seminars, webinars and other events, uh, either organized or participated. And of course we discuss with the applicants before they get into their work in some, something called pre-submission information sessions and also during the, uh, during the opinion making process in something called the trialogue. We'll come to this of course in detail later. All applications, public consultations, opinions are all on the web. Sometimes people ask, could you give us good examples? Well, there are 56 examples at the moment on the web, so, so you can pick your, your favorite example from there. Um, there's a constant dialogue with us, with the industry and the NGOs, to further improve the process. Um, one example of now upcoming events is a CEFIX workshop uh, on the 23rd of September on process chemicals, which we are helping, of course, uh, or participating in, 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 in organizing, uh, sort of in giving speeches and, and presentations there. Then there's something called demystification, and we'll come to that soon. But uh, there are a lot of myths uh, in, in, uh, in, in the uh, application for authorization process, and this particular workshop, hopefully a seminar, uh, demystifies hopefully a lot of things. There are a lot of things which are said to be there which are not true at all, but we'll go through these, these kinds of things. <clears throat> Excuse me. About the transparency, uh, the... Uh, slide over there tells you what the situation was in the beginning of the process and what it is at the moment. The main thing, the main thing is that if you look at the current applications, 96% uh, of the sections uh, in 9 and 10 of the CSR are so-called not blacked. In other words, they uh, have um, uh, the text is, you can read it, and then 4% is blacked. Now, what information is blacked, you can see yourself. 
in the analysis of alternatives, the same uh, on the socioeconomic analysis, it's about 8%, which is blacked and the rest is, is free. Usually the kind of stuff that is blacked is obviously market shares or, or production volumes and things like this, which are CBI, and, and it's clearly, clearly understandable. But uh, the process in that sense is quite transparent, and we're happy, happy about that, uh, both, I think, the NGOs, industry and ourselves, because it, it serves a purpose. Now, the objectives of the seminar to present the, how, how the whole, whole system works, um, how it's been implemented, uh, help future applicants to become, become uh, familiar with the rights and obligations, procedure, formats, templates, and so on, get also knowledge about the first experiences. For us, it's important as well to hear from you uh, what can we do better. Um, we have a little bit of a difficulty now that we are actually gathering experience all the time and we are learning and we're accumulating that experience whereas applicants are always new and they don't have the experience so we start to become a bit blind to our own own uh, world in a sense because we thought oh we thought we said it two years ago why, why don't people listen but of course it's new people coming like today so so we have to remind ourselves as well hey hang on it's not absolutely so clear on, on our website for instance what what would be there needed to be there um for industry stakeholder organizations, it's also good to share experiences and recommendations of the process, the organization, and the practice. And in particular here, Hugo and, and Erwin, they have been from the beginning in these seminars, and they will be doing that role, and I'm very grateful for that. Consultants, advisors, give fit for, pur uh, give fit for purpose information to demystify. And today we have four consultants here. Maybe you want to raise your hands. The ones who are... No, the ones who... The four consultants who have been there bef here before. I think four would be here. And we had a bit of a discussion that, um, because this is, for, of course, for new applicants, so what is the point of having consultants who have been here before? And we thought it would be useful for them to be here so they can also share their experience, and we have a special kind of session tomorrow where they share also their experience in hindsight, in a sense, and that's quite useful, we thought, we thought uh, for all the, all the um, uh, future applicants as well. They are not here to market, of course, their own services. That's, that's absolutely clear. Uh, but in any case, the, the whole point of, of, of the objective uh, of this whole two, one, two, uh, one and a half days is to, to ensure that the application system works from everybody's point of view, in particular now from the applicant's point of view. The way we work is we keep the presentation short. We will not repeat what is in the guidance documents. We trust that people have gone to school and they can read, so, so that's fine. Uh, we allow ample time for discussions and questions and answers, and then if you get, hopefully get your feedback then uh, on, on anything that we have on, on our web, so, web form. Or you can also, of course, send us an email afterwards. So that's the opening part of this. And then I had a first presentation as well. Earlier we had it so that... I think it was Jack De Bruyne who opened it, and then I gave the next presentation, which is going to be me twice. So if we just change it over to, to the next slide. 